Hello, everybody. Here is Ruggiero Graccanelli for The Wonders of Life. And with me is Robert Crocsho, right? Did I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> yeah, it's crucial. It's, it's, it's pretty close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From Australia. <laughs> so, hello. Uh, he's a friend and uh, he basically does magic. So, what, what would you say you do? I exist. <laughs> um, no, uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a part of the earth. Like, we're all a part of the earth. But um, I see my connection with the earth as something that is sacred and something that um, would transcend the, the box. You know, when you say you think outside the box, I feel like my connection with the earth does, is transcended of the box. Yeah, that's, that's the way I feel about it anyway. Awesome. <laughs> oh. um. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to talk a bit about what is happening in 2020 because it's, for me personally, it's a lot. I've like really been turned upside down and uh, I really changed my perspective on things in the last month, months. I, yeah, I, I, I um, mm -hmm. I was just gonna say I know what you mean. Like as soon as like 2020 hit, it was some of like the most. Um, it was a, just a very powerful energy shift. So I know what you mean, in in my own way. A lot, yeah, yeah. What happened to me is actually that while I'm able to to work energetically as before, better than before, of course. I I. I've noticed that I actually decided to work like physically in the, um, in the conservation field, wild um, life conservation. So basically what everything I had planned for my life um, doesn't, doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I kind of understand that because for all of um, 2019, I was trying to make my life work a certain way. And then like, you know, in the last, just the last couple of months, you know, it's only like February the 19th now, I think, of 2020. And um, just since like December last year, it's been a massive shift of um, paradigm of being like, all right, so what I was doing for so long just is not working anymore. So it's just a, a change is, in, is inevitable. And then, the, you know, the 2020, the master number 2-2 two, two energy came around. And it came in strong. And, um, and the way I'm feeling about it is this is very much for um, like building foundations for, for what is to come, really. And I know that 2019 was like a three year and, and that's very much like a catalyst and, and very changing. And I, and for myself, 2019 was so big, like so many changes, just so much shifting and was just, it felt very ungrounding, I'll tell you. And uh, as soon as 2020 came around, it's like, this is grounding, this is foundation stability, this is building and, um, and preparing for, for what is to come. That's, that's part of my experience. Yeah, yeah. It almost feels like it's the first year in in what will be like a decade of of building whatever you say that I want for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, certainly. But, and for the whole of the decade of the you know twenty twenty decades, it's going to be a master twenty two decade. Uh, that's big. Yeah, yeah. very significant. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so oh. something from what uh, what I know is like the the two would be like a like a feminine number, right? So mm -hmm. there's I don't know too much in depth, but I'll just kind of share what I know that seems relevant. So um, there's like three three number groups. First number group we have special numbers, and that's just the number one. The number one is in a class of its own from all other numbers, and then we have our prime numbers and our our composite numbers, and um, so, and the first prime number in existence is the number two. And it's the only prime number in existence, which is an even number. The only prime number, which is a, a feminine number. So every single prime number is masculine, apart from number two. And that comes from number two. So 
so it's a feminine you know every prime number comes from a feminine number and so it seems like um kind of like a like a like a birthing number a creative number like a multiplying mm -hmm. number and it's also the only number in existence that gets the same answer if you times it by itself or you add it by itself you know two plus two is four and also two times two is also four and that's the only number that does that which is also something that i feel is significant i feel like um, the number two very much connects with um with goddess energy in in some form or another <laughs> awesome mm -hmm. Cool. So I, I actually never double in numerology, but it's so powerful, even I can't deny it. Like, yeah, it's so obvious. Yeah. There's certainly something to it, I reckon. I mean, without a doubt, I mean, the whole universe is made of, like, divine mathematics or something. I'm, I'm not going to pretend to understand it. I'm just going to know that I know that it's amazing and that there's mm -hmm. infinite amount that I just don't know and I don't even know that I don't know. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh, i i feel like that acceptance in life of um of the everythingness and the nothingness is is kind of like a nice little balance to be in the um knowing that i know everything that i know but at the same time in the grand scheme of things i know nothing so i'm sitting in a nice little spot between those two places absolutely and yeah so. I, mm -hmm. I found too that uh what I don't know is much, much more significant than what I know. And it's much, much so important because from there things can arrive. And there, there is the, the infinite of the universe, which you don't absolutely can grasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I have, I have so much hope, you know, <laughs> so much hope. Mm -hmm. because it's um i feel like socially one of the one of the things in the big social spotlight is uh, is climate change and and just a, a little personal thing on that it's i don't think it's a change well it is changing but it's a cycle you know it's mm -hmm. like yes. um the earth goes through periods of, of warming and, and cooling and um mm -hmm. even though this is going to be like extremes of hot and cold which is to come you know that, that i that i think you know because I think it's safe to say that humanity's um, progress and efforts has put the earth is at a bit of unbalance. So I think the extremes either side are going to be more extreme because of the, the unbalance. You know, the, the pendulum will swing further, so to say. And, um, so I, I, I know, I know that humanity will absolutely have to um, adopt or, or create or at least implement a way of um consciousness evolution which is in a paradigm of harmony with nature mm -hmm. because we know that nat well, we are nature we're, we're living beings just as much as every other living being on the on this planet you know we may have the divine spark and such but i think that's a bit of a responsibility rather than just to say oh we're great we can do whatever we want as I feel like we have done for a long time. So I think it's a time that humanity takes a bit of responsibility for who we are and the actions and really have a, a nice think about what we're going to do and where we're going because the, the potential of humanity is absolutely vastly amazing. Um, the, you know, could, could you just, um, you know, conceptually imagine if, if humanity would to be able to cooperate with each other regardless of the um, ideas of the separation that we call culture and language and, and border and nas nationality and religion and all those um, cultural illusions that are built off the um, veilings of language. And um, if we could come together in a presence of the heart space and realize that we're all a part of the same thing, I, I feel like that paradigm in and of itself would um, create ripples of change throughout the the fabric of quantum space time or, or something, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, well, actually about this, uh, first of all, I think that getting actually the, ch the, the need to choose between, you know, our ways, the way we think and the actual planet, is a powerful choice 
so powerful because puts us in a actually in a position of of power um, regards in regards to ourselves to everything to all our lives because we can actually choose whether we want to continue life or whether we want to do our own thing i think it's huge totally huge and i think Please. in this moment we can we have to we have to choose and we cannot like bury our, our head in a sand or, or something it's just the moment we we are given the choice so i think that from here wonderful things will happen yeah because down yeah. down down there uh, deep down we are all like wonderful so either we're gonna be so scared that we will stop the you know life on earth i don't think so or we're gonna embrace it and we're gonna be so powerful and things will change so much and i absolutely want to be part of that change yeah and also yesterday i was channeling uh um feline being from uh he said he was from orion and he told me that um, that our perspective is very particular in the universe, exactly because we're so full of separation, so full of um, of obstacles, of limitations, which is not apparently something we should like discard. Uh, he said it was not a matter of. Uh, taking separation and just making away with it like oh yeah greater because something that just something came to, to mind embrace. sorry yeah something just came to mind that just seems relevant sorry uh -huh. and um but it's like with, with painting for example you, you have all the you know the you know, colors of the rainbow and they're all separate as you have them in your palette and the separation in that sense is a good thing because if you mix all the colors together it just turns like a swamp color you know so like the separation <laughs> allows the the you know the different spectrums of the rainbow to be the different colors instead of just like one blob of blobby mess <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah so basically another, mm -hmm. are you go i i was saying that basically it's very interesting because mm, when because we we are used right to to think of ourselves as something which is um, exactly like we we believe we think we should be we desire and exactly like all light all um perfect which is true but that perfection contains imperfection and so when we can actually turn that in when uh, to turn the imperfection into perfection, we don't need to perfect it. That kind of makes sense. So, so is that to, to turn perfection into perfection, we don't need to perfect it? Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, yeah that, that actually makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was um, weird. <laughs> I, uh, I have I had an idea just like kind of mm -hmm. come to mind as as we've been speaking, and um, it kind of stems from a, a chat that I was watching on YouTube. I can't remember who it was, or or I just remember the idea, mm -hmm. and it's about like playing life as either an infinite game or a finite game. And, you know mm -hmm. the difference of like the finite games is like an example of um, playing soccer that um you know there's a time limit. That's the finite point, and whoever scores the most points mm -hmm. is is the winner. And then you have the, the, you know, the infinite game, which I'm going to say music, for example, because the potential for musical development is, is infinite and the potential for playing music is an infinite thing. There's, there's no limit of how musically um, proficient a person can be or artistically proficient as in, as in painting. And I think that a paradigm of consciousness that we can think about as humanity is whether to say 
is humanity something that is finite? Do we have an end? Are we going to attach to having an end to say, like, you know, like as a game of soccer as the there's time limit at the end? Or are we going to say that humanity is something that is potentially infinite and therefore we're going to embrace our limitless potential of being able to become infinitely uh, talented at being human, you know? And I think with that, with the, the finite kind of paradigm thinks that let's use all the resources we can. Let's um, not care about sustainability because we're going to die anyway. There's a, there's a mm -hmm. time limit to this thing. So <laughs> we're just going to act as if we can just do whatever we want in this time limit. Cause, but then if we think infinitely is a, that we're going to be on this planet for literally as long as we can, and we're not going to put our own time limit on it. Therefore we think about sustainability and the future. And instead of it being a plan for the next 10, 20 years as in a business plan or something, it'll be a, a plan for the next hundred years and then next 200 and then 300, and, you know, that idea and so on. And then looking at the long run as, as, as if it's infinite because, um, that like time is not something that's that's uh, linear for example like what uh, just just uh, as a as a reference for um from from personal experience for for guitar for so the the amount of progress i made in the first week of being able to play guitar is not the amount of progress i can make in a week playing guitar like 7 years later for example like of course um, you know yeah, and I just think that, that that's relevant as well to say that, you know, time mm -hmm. is not linear because a lot of the time we will measure our progress or I've been playing this for X amount of years or I've been painting for, for this long. And, um, you know, it's like if, if I'm not an experienced painter, what I could do in three hours an experienced painter could probably do in, you know, just seconds. And um, I just think that's something to think about at least. Yeah, I think it, it definitely, definitely changes perspective. And I think that that's what we need right now, to change perspective as a, yeah. you know, as a species. I think so. It's that uh, revolution of, of consciousness. And um, I, I saw something that just made me think it was like a little idea to play with. But it's like when the, when the light bulb came out, it was not like a war on candles or or when the car came out it wasn't a war on on uh, on carriages for example much in the in the same way that this revolution is not a war on old consciousness it's just the revolution of consciousness itself and um even that idea with the um if we, if we tran transpose it to the idea of of uh energy re renewable energy um mm -hmm. renewable energy is not a war on the old ways such as coal to get energy it's just simply the change and the natural progression of things and like you know if we we, we evolve we, we improve we change and that's a fact of of life and we also get to choose what we change which way we change and we, we have free will and that's just that's just the point of that and and we're always changing and we have the free will to change. And, and I think in a, in a consciousness paradigm, we can, we can choose to change in a not so good way, or we can choose to change in the most magnificent of ways. And that's the beauty of the free will. And if we think this way in terms of big groups of people as in collective consciousness, if the collective consciousness came together and was like, wait, humanity is actually magnificent. Like humanity is actually so beautiful. Like, and when we when we truly know this, and that doesn't discount all the you know horrific things that humanity has done. It doesn't um, simply excuse them, but it says, "Hey, we're not moving in that way. We're not going that way anymore. We were going that way, and we've we've been there. But that's not what we want. We we've seen it, and we don't want it. So let's choose to pick a new direction in consciousness to choose harmony and and benevolence, for example." And, um, that, that we can actually do that and we have the power and the power is our free will and our conscious intent and as we're all like quantumly um connected with each other like the the just me choosing benevolence has a ripple effect and it doesn't mean i'm going to make other people make decisions it just means that my decision will ripple for other people of course and about that um how are you um feeling how are you living 2020 about 
um, groups of people who, who might work with you, who might uh, like, did, did you find anybody? Because I was actually like in the in last month, um, I was really, really um, uh, taken by surprise by the, um, the amount of people that wanted to make contact that wanted to create something, that wanted to, you know, um, find family. And I and thought I was part of that. Yeah. It's been very, very interesting because it, it hadn't happened before. It's like, it has been like, I don't know, suddenly, yeah, there's many people that we can work, that can work with me, like so many. I'm very happy. Yeah. I'm very glad to have you about that. <laughs> I can speak some about, about my experience. Um, so I'm, I'm in Australia. I, I live in Queensland. And when we do, we do courses, we, we call them certificates. So I'm doing hey, I'm, a certificate three in individual support. So just what that means, for example, is like I am. Um, to, to be like a support worker to 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 assist people whether that's elderly people or you know people with disabilities that's what i'm learning at the moment and i haven't studied for a while i mean i tried to study a few years back but i dropped out in like the third week i was like screw school and i dropped out of high school too and i you know i just haven't been much for like classroom learning and i'm not a fan of paperwork and, and that kind of stuff anyway but the, the point that, that i'm getting to is that i'm um, my pardon. Sorry, guys. Pardon. Um, no problem. So what I was what I was saying is I'm I'm around a uh, like a group of people every day, and and I'm just saying that's a that's a change for me because I was a bit of a hermit for for a good while, and. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's been like adjusting <laughs> around, uh, you know, the same group of people every day. And even as I say it, it sounds a little absurd. So I want to, I want to just want to speak about a certain experience that I had recently that seems relevant. Um, so I went to, I was going to school one day and I woke up in a really like grumpy mood. I was just like, oh, just like, mm, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and um and then i then i kind of get to school like i end up walking there and it's like hot and it's humid and i get there i'm just drenched in sweat because australia and i'm just and then i'm just like really grumpy because i just i don't really know why i just was and i just accepted that i was and then oh, i get to school and obviously my my the, the trainers and my classmates could tell i was in a grumpy mood i wasn't directing to anyone i wasn't trying to say oh i'm angry because i'm angry at anyone i was just in a bad mood so I wasn't trying to make anyone feel bad. I was just minding my own business as well because I knew I was in a, in a bad mood. And um, I'm sitting, I'm sitting down, and the and the trainer of the class, you know, is like, you know, it's like, oh, is, you know, are you all right, you know. And then, then as soon as like someone asked me when I was all right, I just kind of just like blurted out, and I was just like, um. And then I just spoke what I what I was annoyed about. One of the like big things I was like, I was I was annoyed about homelessness because I I see homelessness. Um, I have had periods of being homeless myself and I just know that it kind of sucks. And then on the same side that we can literally, we have the resources and the actual capacity to do something about it. Because, you know, in my country, I know that there is enough homes to literally house every single person in our country. But the only reason they're not being homed is because they can't pay the rent for the house. But the house is sitting there empty. And I was just getting all like, oh, like, these people are suffering and we literally have the resources to help them, but we're not helping them because of money. Ah. And I was in one of those moods, but I, I voiced it. I tried to voice it as maturely as, as I could. And I, and I was, and I was heard. And um, so, you know, they, they empathized with me and that empathizing with me made a, made a big difference for how I was feeling. And then, um, and then the, the trainer thought of this idea. It was just like, how about we go around the room, the people in the room, and we just, um, you know, we say like kind things about each other. And that just changed my whole mood. Instead of being all grumpy and angry, the teacher was like, let's change this. Let's, um, you know, be kind to each other and literally went around the room and said nice things about each other. So I ended up saying something kind about everyone in the room and everyone in the room said something kind about me. And, you know, that my whole mood, instead of being all like, Argh, went to just like, oh my God, these people actually are compassionate and they, they you know, they care and 
enough to support me in my emotional states and it just like changed everything just like a conversation which you know opened another conversation which held the space to have a beautiful conversation you know and it's wow. it's just that in and of itself was amazing it was mm -hmm. so simple as well and so easy to actually do well wow. made such a big difference Wow, wonderful, really. <laughs> what a what a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I, I reckon, eh? Hey. <laughs> so it, I just think that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And um recently I've been um been spending so so much more time in in nature like i love my trees like ah oh, trees are the best and i've i've met another man who's uh who's a bit of a magician himself and we've been um just kind of doing some work together um helping each other heal mainly because the way this world is it hasn't always been so kind to the more magically inclined mm -hmm. people and um so we've just both had our own dramas and our own issues and um and we've just kind of chosen to to help each other but then it's like in this kind of way about caring for each other and being able to help each other and offering each other the help but then at the same time being able to be detached enough to let people have their own experience like not trying to um to take a person's experience away from them because it's 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 important for them even even pain and suffering can be something that is um, enriching to the journey of enlightenment and the spiritual journey itself. And, um, and it's, it's just, it's just nice to, to have another, you know, earth connected person to help me regain my connection with the earth because um, in the way in which this society is built, it doesn't um, necessarily cater or accept all of the um, spectrums of consciousness which we have as human beings. And so something that like I, I have noticed in this world at least, the, the world kind of says you're either masculine or you're feminine. And that's it, you're either yin or you're yang and you're not both because that's just weird and we don't do that. That's, that's just the way I felt. And um, personally, I know myself to be masculine and feminine as a balance, you know, even, even though I completely groundedly understand that I am the, like have a man's body, but I understand that I have like a feminine consciousness as well as my masculine consciousness, yin and, and yang. So it's like in this, you know, just growing up has only been accepting like half of my, uh, myself really. And, uh, I just think that's something that could be brought to conscious awareness and that the, um, for, for the younger ones as well, that, um, I see, them kind of struggling with this a bit um about the the the, the trans uh movements and i'm not going to claim to know everything about it um but i do have a few friends that have, have spoken to me about it and i've asked a few questions just because i'm curious like that and but just from a personal observation is something that i notice is that uh men can have masculine spirits or feminine spirits, for example. So there can be a man with a female spirit. And then on the flip side, you can have a woman that's got a masculine spirit, or a woman that's got a, or a feminine spirit, for example. And then you can have the dual spirits, like a, like a man with both, and then a fe like a female with both. So it's like, I think that that's something to take into consideration with this, um, you know, this, this trans, I wouldn't call it, I don't know if it's a movement, but just, you know, just a shift. I'd say, and I think that's something that's that's relevant. That um, that yeah, the the body does not always define the the spirit, and I just feel like that might be a puzzle piece for someone. And I don't, I just have pieces. I don't have the the entire picture at this moment. Of course, yeah, I think that actually, when we think about the younger generations, like I'm twenty nine, so oh, uh, how old are you? I'm I'm 22 in the year 2020. <laughs> so I think yeah, that's well, pretty neat. So you're definitely younger than me, and I feel that uh, going like forward, people are going well. People are more and more um, 
I don't know how to put it, like um, politically correct, but they're more like, and more powerful. They're more and more in tune with their, they're more and more able to withstand anything that society actually gives them. And uh, everything. I, I feel yeah, that I the younger generations are way ahead of us. Way. Like there's yeah. not even a race. And I'm so happy about it. But we it. also need to help them too. <laughs> as much as their spirits themselves are incredibly advanced to the point in which we need to relearn our way of doing things to cater for these younger generations because they're already born incredibly advanced, but they, but they still need the, the help of the, of the elders and the ancestors, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to, just to understand the concept of time because when you're a, a child, you don't really understand the, the concept of, of time um, as much clearly. And I feel like time would be something that elders would understand a lot more than, than younger people, just as a, a generalization. Mm -hmm. So even though, you know, it, it's making me think about in astrology, like um, planets Saturn and Uranus, and this being the age of Aquarius, and, you know, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, but also Saturn as, as well, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. And so Saturn is relates to Kronos or the, you know, the God of time, which is why it's related to the elders. And then Uranus is very much related to the revolutionary individuality, be who you are, be free and liberated. And so it's like the opposite, the opposites, like polarities, not that they contradict each other, but they're different. And it's like, if you had too much structure and not enough individuality, the system would fail. But if you had absolutely no structure whatsoever and you only had everyone being complete individuals, it may not work either. I just as a, a guess to say, so I think it's, it's a balance of structure and change. And the, the younger generations are much more in that Aquarius kind of energy of the change of the, the higher vibrational, whether it's higher or lower vibration, I think that's the point. I think it's both the, the freedom kind of thing, like freedom of mind compared to the structure of mind as um, tradition versus um, changing traditions. Mm -hmm. So it's like at this point in our humanity, um, our traditions must change. For, for example, with all the holidays that we have, they don't make sense to me anyway. They seem like commercialized because I know that Easter, I don't, like I know that there's a deeper meaning from what we're told. Um, and even, even for Christmas as well, I know that comes from a deeper, more ancient tradition, but has been commercialized. And uh, so forth. The, the meaning of it has been, has been changed. And I know the, that is something that will have to come to light. Uh, I'm probably not the, the best person to talk about it, but I know that it's a, that it's a thing to be aware of. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, I'm not very, very mm, fluent on the subject, Peter, but I know that the various uh, holidays are very important, can be very important, because they are like a mark of passage from one season to another. They are very yeah. in tune. They can, they can allow us to get in tune with the, the flow of the earth. I think it's very useful. Certainly. And I just was this thinking just now about how like the the moon and the sun and the and the planets themselves are like a giant clock, really. And um and it was I think I was kind of gonna go along the lines that um the the kind of like Western timekeeping has um been purposefully changed from the traditional or the traditional, the native way of timekeeping as um the astrological timekeeping compared to the, you know, one second, two second, three second, four second, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years. And um, the, you know, it's like, that it's kind of like, it's only been changed ever so slightly, but it's out of harmony, I think. And I, and just, just like to be helpful if humanity got more in time with the timing of the planets more so than the timing of the man-made clock i think the the man-made clock needs a bit of um adjustments and it, that's the actual science of it i'm not certain but that is the part i do know mm -hmm. absolutely i think that 
especially in Australia, this is very strong because for uh, you know Aboriginal people, time was completely different, and it's mm -hmm. well quite interesting because of course it's not what we are uh, used to think necessarily, and I mm -hmm. think that we can get back to that kind of understanding. I think so. What I, what I think I would appreciate is just to, um, even as a Western person living in a house in a civilized society, I still want to know what the native people have to teach. I want to, I, I would, you know, it's like, I, we are citizens of the earth. You know, this is my home as much as it's their home, their home as much as it's mine. I want to learn what the native people have to say. And, and I can tell that it's been kind of kept from us their information their knowledge and their wisdom um i don't know if, it, if it's purposefully i'm not going to claim that but um we we need to know what they have to teach and we need to harmonize with them as you know we need to harmonize with each other not is in a way of saying all right native people um we can pay you this much by the hour and this is what you're going to do for us no 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 absolutely we don't we don't want that we want to say native people how can you help us liberate ourselves because they have so much to teach you know i think they have such such wisdom that i probably don't even know the tip of the iceberg of but i could admit that i don't know the tip of the iceberg of it and that i want to know because it it seems like it would help humanity to find its truth again find its its way it's it's something that it needs that it's like um one of the things that humanity or at least the western world is struggling with is um is bad morals and bad manners so for example like you know how um mcdonald's and and kfc and coca-cola is really bad for your body and we call it junk food right and and the ancients used to get their morals and their manners from stories it's kind of like we have junk stories like we have junk food um, in the terms of television and media, of, you know, so we have we have junk stories that mm -hmm. aren't teaching us good morals. It's just the only, it's entertainment, and entertainment is done for profit, unless it's done, you know, for a purely artistic or creative purpose. Uh, that's a bit of a, it's a bit of an area. I'm just going to leave it that. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely agree because uh, in actually in indigenous society all over the world. The stories are part of your life, like they're the foundation of your life because they're secret. They tell you the truth of the world. For us, it is different, and at least in appearance. In appearance, and since for us it seems different, we get stories that no one will listen to. No one, because because they, they they're not sacred anymore. So people just. Mm, use them to do anything they want without actually mm, recognizing their power. And so with that, yeah. since they don't recognize its power, they just are not powerful anymore. And it's, it's such a shame. It's such a shame because we do have the stories. We do have the everything we need. We, we, uh, we can begin again we should begin again to tell the stories that make a difference i think that this is one way that our society can actually grow and should grow as far as fast as we can because many times we see a story that is brilliantly told that is engaging and true and speaks to our heart but it is always 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 one case amongst many many others amongst an endless sea of which are just time spent listening to something but not actually without actually being anything there except you know entertainment time passed and it's such a shame I, I really mm. think that each of us has got uh, stories to tell, real stories to tell, stories to tell not Certainly. 
to actually get some money. But because we feel them and when we feel them, that's the difference. Because when we begin yeah. to share the stories that we actually feel, that we actually live within ourselves, then other people can listen to them, can feel, can begin to realize what in, what's inside of them. I think this is fundamental. If we don't, I do agree. Yeah, it's it's like the the amount of um, knowledge or information or, or wisdom you can get from listening to like sacred story is is vast. It is is more than the than you could write in the you know you know write. I, I think I think you understand what I'm trying to try to say that like the morals of a good story can be applied to many different scenarios uh, throughout life. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah because i think that some somewhere in 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 the process of us telling stories the moral got so awkward that we didn't realize that the moral was actually what the story mm, gave you what the story mm, was making you feel so yeah. was what the storyteller felt as he was telling the story it's like the um the moral of the story is like the fruit of the story and even inside the fruit is the seed for another story you know and i think that's what's sacred about it as, as well mm -hmm. yeah i think that storytelling is so so important for us like sacred really because i uh, i think that our life is a story is the story we tell we want to tell mm -hmm. so basically if we recognize it if we start telling the stories we want to tell and living the story we want to live and recognizing this is the story we want to live i think that many of the mm, like worries we have like many of the uh, ideas and many of the uh, limitations we impose on ourselves would just vanish because we would recognize that just sometimes a good story is not exactly what we expect. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I love stories. I For me, they are. Stories are amazing. They're, they're great. <laughs> they really are. So, um, yeah. Now, what about? I don't know. You got anything you particularly want to talk about? For example, yeah, something's kind of come to mind. Uh huh. It's like um, what we would call the veil. I think is kind of like a construct of language and something of. Yeah, it's like a construction of language because when we're thinking with words, there seems to be a veil. Like, for example, um, with 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 a, with a person, or you know, like we 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 can sometimes attach concepts and ideas and words and say that this person is this, or this person is this, and this person is not this, and then you create a veil because none of those things are true. Because even though my name is Robert. I am not Robert, you know, it's like, I am not the word, I am not the name, I am the, the presence and the essence. And even using those words is not presence and essence, it represents something. And I think that um, language as a form of representation and ideas and concepts um, is helpful, yes, and is, is helpful, yeah, but is not it is is not the presence of it and it's kind of like the difference between um yeah to to look through the veil and to reach through the veil is to just kind of let your mind go silent and still and feel into the core of your being mm -hmm. in that stillness the veil is lifted and it's not that you have to go climb a mountain and to go see a guru and to go uh wander through the Am amazon and go take a bunch of psychedelics it's it's about being able to just be still 
enough to let the um, water settle so you can see the reflection and see through it. Mm -hmm. And that stillness is the presence which allows the veil to be um, realized for what it is, just ripples obscuring the view. Yeah, about that. Absolutely. I think that the most uh, powerful, most useful meditations I've ever done are just ones where I'm listening to silence and you know uh looking into the nothing and they're so powerful there's always something new that emerges and at the same time i noticed that uh we also we always use you know the veil the the distinction there's such a distance between us and then well with between the physical and the spiritual world but i i felt that uh, the energies that I contact in astral travels, in meditations, in whatever, actually, uh, I, I find them in my physical life too. It's just a matter of recognizing they're there because all, often I feel them and I say, what, why the hell is this here? But, but it's there. So, uh, I think that the, the actual construct of the veil, it's something we can lose behind because uh, there is no veil which actually stops us from connecting to the whole universe, from feeling, from being with, the, with any body, anything, in any way we want, in any moment. And the... The fact that we think it, there is, is just because we, we give some energies a certain uh, face, a certain um, form. And so when we actually find it in our everyday life, uh, unattached from everything else we might have uh, attached to it, we say, eh, what? That, this is a memory. No, it's not a memory. It's actually the actual energy. Because of course, that energy can manifest itself through a memory, but it's still something else. It's not a memory. It's still somebody. Yeah. I think this is very, very important. Because when we discover then that the, the physical world is actually the spiritual world, then everything, you know, it's so easy, so simple. Yeah. <laughs> I want to I share something to do, to do exactly with this. Um, so uh, one time I was, um, I want to do some meditation and I felt like sticking one of those like YouTube meditation tracks on and I, um, I looked through and I found one to find your spirit guide. And so I was like, okay, I could, I could do with meeting my spirit guide. I feel like I could use a bit of a, I could use a guide right now, you know, a bit of guidance. So I do the I do the meditation, I, I pass through all the parts and I get to the point where it's like, here is your spirit guide. And then in my, my mind's eye, I saw um like the back of a beetle, like uh the yeah, the back of a beetle, like its shell. And I was like, oh, and I called it Kepri after, you know, the Egyptian beetle god, the you know, the scarab beetle. And um so I saw the shell but very clearly that was the point that stuck out to me. And then literally um, the next day I went to, um, to a friend's house and um, he, has, he has a roommate there who, who sells items and stuff. And I'm just looking at the items that he has for sale. And then there was this beetle in, in resin um, and the exact shell that I saw in the meditation the night before is the exact shell that this beetle in resin had. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this is it. And I didn't have any money, so I was like, oh, can I trade you? And I traded him a nice piece of Damborite for this, um, ended up to be a rhinoceros beetle. Uh, and I just, the exact same shell that I saw in the meditation is the exact same shell on the physical of it, you know? I just think that's amazing. And I've had experiences like that where it's been, I've had this like lucid meditative uh, vision and then the next day it happens and, um, you know, like bless my heart. It's only been good ones up till, up till now of, of things that I'm incredibly uh, grateful for of, um, of meeting people as well. Um, I had this, this one dream of 
seeing a uh, in the you know how in dreams you're in a different state and things make sense on a different like kind of realm of consciousness in in this dream there was this um i was like brother it was, it was a person that came to me and he was just this bright bright light and i knew it was a person because they had a staff you know like a like a shaman staff and i was like it's you i was just so happy to see him and then i just gave him a big hug i was like brother i it's been so long it's just like that reunion that that just sacred reunion and I, in the dream, it was lucid as I, my staff, and it's the staff that I use in my waking world. And it's kind of got like a, like an, it's an elephant at, at the point. So it's like my staff's like an elephant. And then my brother's staff was like a hippo. And then we see each other in the dream. And then our staffs are talking to each other and we're talking to each other. And then um, it was, it was, a, it, it was, and then and now that person's in my physical life and i saw the staff before i saw it in real life and then i went to his house and there's his staff the literal same exact staff that i saw in the dream before i saw it in real life and that was just a bit of a, a mind blower and he's the the shaman the has the magician the whatever label but has, has helped me heal very um significantly and has helped me with some very sacred things and uh, we we met in a or that i at least had a spiritual vision beforehand and it it just completely lined up it was a truth it wasn't mm -hmm. like a an imagination it was a truth mm -hmm. and yes. i think that something that's important is to realize that magic is something that does exist if you don't look for it it's not going to look for you because you are the magic and if you look for it you've already got it because you are it you know it's like it's inside you and it's inside all of us but it's just who wants to let it out you know <laughs> in much the same way that we can all dance but not everyone enjoys dancing or we you know mm -hmm, absolutely just as a metaphor mm -hmm. i think that's exactly the same like yeah also if you don't like it if you don't have much interest interesting it's not gonna be there for you like you will never like you exactly like you would not uh, find anything in dancing you would not find anything in magic you wouldn't find the magic in magic like you wouldn't find the magic in dancing exactly the same yeah and it's kind of um it's make, makes me think of if um you haven't taken the time to like form a relationship with another person you're not going to have that relationship you know, just, just as another metaphor. So it's like building a relationship with your inner magic. And, you know, the stronger the relationship is, the stronger the relationship is. But it takes time and it takes effort and it takes virtues, the whole spectrum of virtues, you know, it's whichever you choose to create. And it's like um, kind of like alchemy, like different virtues are like different ingredients that, um, yeah, just just that idea in itself as well okay thank you very much man i think we can close it off unless you got anything else you would like to talk about no i'm, well, I'm happy as with that thank you so yeah, much sure. thank you very much a lot for this interaction and uh, see you soon and for everybody yes. Uh, we're the winners of life and thank you very much see you soon thank you see you <laughs>